All right, so this is, um, again, the same setup on both quads. Both of them are on channel R1, max output on both. And we're just going to go behind this school over here. Again, it's elevated, same situation where we're going to have some ground and some uh, pretty thick brick school in the way. So we're going to have two corners to go around this first corner here. And hmm. already go, going. Going to black and white again. There we Starting go. Starting to anyway. <laughs> oh, man, what a freak show. And that, that, now the disco show is about to start. <laughs> and here we are completely covered. Look at that. Oh, yes, this is. And uh, the AC0 is, is holding off to the very end. Yeah, look at this. Look at this. Black and uh, if you notice there, I lost my OSD on rapid fire. So if anyone understands, that means your signal is as bad as it's going to get. <laughs> I actually have to come back around here and turn to the right because I need to get the OSD to lock back on or else the signal is just going to be poor from here on out. So okay. I just All got right. the OSD yep. back. There we nice. go. So the analog uh, caused a little detour there, but it's all for science. For science. <laughs> <laughs> I, want to, I want to play that back in slow-mo. Yeah, this section right here, it really shows off the penetration here. Yeah. This is the best analog pretty much has to offer for 5-inch uh, bando freestyle. And this is what you get. Right. Man, that is nasty. So, we're, yeah. like, we're missing pixels and stuff in HD0. But we have color. It's a lot easier to fly through if you are playing this back and not just looking at a freeze frame. You'll see that you can see the pixels that are missing here. You can see those in the next frame. They come right after it, one sixtieth of a second later. Um, it's just way easier to fly through. We got color, more resolution, um, same similar penetration. I mean, we got one watt here versus one point five watt. And I mean, just look, look straight out ahead. The the color information alone just gives you so much more data to to make decisions with. You actually know there's a stop sign there. I see the red, there's sky behind it, and the analog image, if you don't remember what was there, that's basically just noise. Right. Wow. Yeah, that's that's a torture test right there. Oh, yeah. You can actually even see in the AC0, I'm flying more calm. Mm-hmm. So then uh, fast forward a little bit. So we're going to go around these houses in the back. Okay, we don't know. Okay. Here we go. Skip ahead. There we go. And now we're going to fly around these houses in the back right here. Oh, man. I just got the colors and the warping and the... Mm. Okay. <laughs> yeah, go. this is going to be a fun one. So press play. Yeah. Here we go. And yeah, it's uh, it's barely manageable on analog. I'll tell you that it's barely manageable. I'm actually uh, tracking the quad with my antenna there. I'm pretty much relying on that crosshair extreme. Yep, yep. And you're just using the standard patch antenna. On oh yeah, the standard eight decibels. So I believe the crosshair extremes, if I'm not mistaken, are ten, ten point something. But I'll just call it a ten. Sure. Yeah, and I think that the Patch antennas in the in the VRX are actually lower than eight. But, okay. Uh, they they're advertised as eight. Um, and here wow. we go. This is actually the most difficult area. We're both behind myself, and surrounded by metal on both sides. And this is where signal just gets really bad on both at a certain point. But man, I the the difference is pretty much speaking for itself here. I think. Right. And here the HD zero will start struggling a bit as the you have the actual cage and the bleachers there were yeah. directly behind myself. But if, if you're looking out into the distance, you can still easily fly through that. Like what you're focused on locked in at the distance is still stable, but on the analog it's kinda of like jumping up and down and color shifting and it's really stressful. Oh yeah. So this was a pretty uh heavy stress test that I wanted to do there. All on a heavy Wi-Fi area. This is as pretty much bad as it's going to get. Yeah. No kidding. Wow. <laughs> I 
this one here is yeah that's really the proof of concept i would say right there this is brick this isn't you know drywall this is not your typical bando location where it's a full brick building and that there are sessions in there right now. Wi-Fi is on. Um, this is uh, pretty much as bad as it gets. And as you can see, that analog image is not holding out. Well, thanks for doing all this testing. It's a ton of work. I, really... <laughs> I need some. <laughs> <laughs> I hope this really uh, puts the nail firmly in the coffin. Uh, I believe it will. It, it's time to move on from analog. This is, oh, yeah. I think this is very, very comparable at the limits, um, practical limits, I would say. Yeah. yeah. And and a, a huge improvement in uh, color, fidelity, and uh, re retention of color. And just like the the stability of the image, you might have missing blocks of data, but it's not all warped and shifted and mangled so all yeah. right wow. the last clip is uh going to be one in a parking garage going up again uh, it's going to be a little bit more of an extreme torture test and we're just going to let that one pretty much play itself out and just let you make a decision on what you think looks better okay. um this yeah. is the one the one watt vtx so First part is going to have not much interference. We're mostly going to be dealing with multipathing with some chain link fences coming up. Both images look pretty good. And over here is where things start getting uh, pretty interesting with the multipathing. I would say both are doing pretty good still. With HD0 taking a clear win there, it's pretty much a perfect image. Mm -hmm. And we're coming up here. Uh, this area right here, we're about 850 feet away from me right now. We're also lower, so um, we're actually blocked by Earth right now. So there's actually not a direct line of sight between the quad and uh, the VRX right now for this entire section. So this is why you're seeing the analog really freak out right here. Yeah, wow. Really it's, freaks out. It's flyable. It's just yuck. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and right here is where the HD0 is going to start showing its its breakup a little bit. And uh, we're going to approach a school, and we're going to test the penetration uh, through brick. And this school coming up here right on the left is 415 feet thick. Measured through Google Maps, and I'm standing about 215 feet to the side of the school. So we're approaching it here right now. You can just see the HD0 is maintaining that beautiful color. And this right here is a true torture test. Yeah. And <laughs> wow. I was getting all, all sorts of warnings on my tracer, uh, link quality, link quality. So <laughs> didn't want to hang out there too long. <laughs> and uh, you get a, an idea just how thick that school is. So you can see this is a, a very, uh, this isn't something you would typically go behind in a freestyle session. Put right. it that way. That's right. Definitely not. So. As you can see, yes, you can go behind some brick walls and you can maintain an image. And uh, the 800 milliwatt just could not maintain an image there at all. I was basically just hovering there, black and white, looked a little worse than the goggles. Uh, I would say here HD0 took this victory pretty easily. Nice.